Well, I think, you know, you think back to four years old, and I don't really remember a lot about being four years old except for that. Um, you know, I, that day at the State Fair, we were sitting in the top row, and I have the whole picture and the whole scene in my mind, um, exactly how it all went down, waiting for him to come out of the truck, and uh, doing all the speed runs and the wheelies and all the anticipation, you know, and then finally the jump. But it, it's, it's interesting to me that I have that much of a recollection of it from four years old. But I think that's the impact of Evil Knievel, you know, that he had on not just kids, you know, but even adults, because that stadium was full of adults too. And the, he was a unique um, character and to a lot of people a superhero at that time. So obviously for me as, as, a, as a child, it was huge to see him. And then I was, my family was in the motorcycle business, so I was a natural person for me to have as a, you know, I guess you'd say a hero or somebody to, to follow. So yeah, my bedroom was full of Evil Knievel posters and models and toys and, uh, you know, I have pictures of me getting the toys at Christmas and unwrapping, you know, the Evil Knievel items like so many other young kids did too. So yeah, for sure. I followed him, um, you know, through kind of the end of his career, and then honestly, didn't really think a whole lot about him, you know, other than um, there was a big impact for me in my in my younger years, probably four to ten years old. You know, that's probably where it had the most impact. So, a lot of the people we see come through the museum had that same experience, and um, they. That's what's kind of neat about this place is it brings you back to that time and there's so much here but there's a lot of cues, for, you know, I think probably the biggest is the toys that people see and just takes them right back to that, those, those younger years and it's fun to see people experience that, um, people enjoy it.